I am Science Major Mouse, here to tell you about the super mega deadly virus, HIV. HIV is a typical virus in many ways. It's a retrovirus. What exactly does that mean? A virus is much smaller than a bacterium and can only be seen under an electron microscope. They can't reproduce on their own and need to invade living cells to multiply. This unique time-lapse photography shows a virus invading a human cell. As the virus enters the human cell, it hijacks the cell's reproductive machinery and starts to multiply. Viruses like HIV and herpes can't be seen under an ordinary microscope. What can be seen is the damage done to human cells by the virus. And the damage done by the HIV virus is pretty serious. It attacks C4 plus helper T cells, destroying the very immune system that would fight against it. HIV is a single-stranded retrovirus, which means it enters the cell in its RNA form. Entry of HIV into the cell requires the presence of certain receptors on the cell surface. CD4 receptors and co-receptors such as CCR5 or CXCR4. These receptors interact with protein complexes, which are embedded in the viral envelope. When HIV approaches a target cell, GP120 binds to the CD4 receptors. This process is termed attachment. It promotes further binding to a co-receptor. Co-receptor binding results in a conformational change in GP120. This allows GP41 to unfold and insert its hydrophobic terminus into the cell membrane. GP41 then folds back on itself. This draws the virus towards the cell and facilitates the fusion of their membranes. The viral nucleocapsid enters the host cell and breaks open, releasing two viral RNA strands and three essential replication enzymes. Integrase, protease, and reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase begins the reverse transcription of viral RNA. Here, single-stranded viral RNA is transcribed into an RNA-DNA double helix. Ribonuclease H breaks down the RNA. The polymerase then completes the remaining DNA strand to form a DNA double helix. Now, integrase goes into action. It cleaves a dinucleotide from each three prime end of the DNA, creating two sticky ends. Integrase then transfers the DNA into the cell nucleus and facilitates its integration into the host cell genome. The host cell genome now contains the genetic information of HIV. Activation of the cell induces transcription of proviral DNA into messenger RNA. the viral messenger RNA migrates into the cytoplasm, where building blocks for a new virus are synthesized. Some of them have to be processed by the viral protease. Two viral RNA strands and the replication enzymes then come together and core proteins assemble around them, forming the capsid. This immature viral particle leaves the cell, acquiring a new envelope of host and viral proteins. The virus matures and becomes ready to infect other cells. Well, I'm glad I'm not a human. I certainly wouldn't want to get HIV. Well, I mean, how do you get HIV? Most people who are infected get it from sexual contact, which is why it's often called a sexually transmitted disease. But you can also get it from needle sharing, childbirth, breastfeeding, and blood transfusions, although blood transfusions are now considered safe in the United States. Oh. Well, so if you do get the virus, what kind of symptoms can you expect? Usually, someone who is exposed to HIV may not have any symptoms at all. And this may happen over a period of three to six months, after which time the body begins to recognize the virus and develops antibodies. At that time, they will have these flu-like illness um, and symptoms that will go away. 
And then after the symptoms go away, they will not have any symptoms at all. And that can go from 10 to 15 years without having any symptoms, but the, the disease process does advance. Does the immune system even have any way to respond to the HIV virus? Though AIDS patients produce HIV antibodies, for unknown reasons, they do little to prevent the progress of the infection. One hypothesis is that HIV spends so much of its life cycle inside cells that it is seldom exposed to the antibody. Wait, but what about the 33 million people in the world who already have HIV? What are they supposed to do? HIV replicates billions of times per day, destroying the host's immune cells and eventually causing disease progression. Drugs which interfere with the key steps of viral replication can stop this fatal process. Entry into the host cell can be blocked by fusion inhibitors, for example. Inhibition of reverse transcriptase by nucleoside inhibitors or by non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors is part of standard antiretroviral regimens. The action of integrase can be blocked. Protease inhibitors are also part of standard antiretroviral therapy. Wait, isn't there a cure? Or a vaccine? Or anything? Some viruses are smart. They can change shape or disguise or hide inside normal cells. Certain white cells called T helpers act like sniffer dogs sniffing out these smart viruses. They warn the system to make the right kind of antibodies. Developing a vaccine against HIV is difficult because the virus is the smartest of them all. It uses disguise and changes shape and hides inside cells. At first, the sniffer dogs are good at warning us to make antibodies against HIV. But after a while, HIV invades them and multiplies. The new HIV viruses kill more T helpers. And when most T helpers are dead, the immune system can no longer defend itself against disease. A Melbourne research team is claiming a breakthrough in the fight against HIV AIDS. It's hoped a simple injection could completely eliminate the deadly disease within 15 years. The discovery focuses on a hormone called interleukin-7 produced within the body's immune system. By injecting mice infected with an autoimmune disease... Hey, wait a minute. That's my brother. Or, well, maybe it's a cousin. Well, anyway, what are you doing to him? Scientists discovered a dramatic improvement within 30 days and they were clear of the virus within two months. When we first started to see the mice recovering from, from their disease, that was really quite impressive for us. They now hope to have human trials underway within two years. That poor, innocent little mouse. You people make me sick.